Brad right now. Hi, Brad. How you doing? I'm doing well. How about you guys? Uh, absolutely great. great. We are great. But Saturday was a, a very interesting day and a, and a bad day here in Pittsburgh. Um, when you heard about the Dwayne Haskins stuff, what did you think, Brad? Yeah, that, that really sucked. Um, you know, I think it's always especially tough when you see a guy that was kind of doing all the right things. And it sounded like he was totally on the right track, was working his ass off, trying to get back to the potential that he had. That, that made it even more, you know, you know unfortunate as it, than it already was. Yeah, and I, I think also, Brad, uh, somewhat callously about the football impact. I mean, Dwayne Haskins was the third-string quarterback here, but was on the roster and, and fought for a backup role last year. You would imagine he would be doing the same this year. Um, I don't know if it really affects the Steelers, and they were. it sounds like they were already looking at quarterbacks anyway, but it, it, it could affect, I guess, the dynamic of that quarterback room going forward. Yeah, potentially. Um, like you said, I mean, you don't don't necessarily know the exact role he was going to have, but you know, I do also think those dynamics in that room matters a lot. And it sounds like you know maybe he brought some levity to the situation, and kind of kept things light, and and I think he probably would have been a good a good presence for a guy like Trubisky. Let's say he he is the starter in Week One. I, I think he would have helped him kind of keep things in perspective and and kind of keep it light, which would have gone a long way potentially. Duncan, the official coffee of the Fan Morning Show. Brad Spielberger, our official guy from Pro Football Focus that we like to talk to once a week or so as we push on and we get into the draft because we have draft talk. We have to have draft talk every single day. I mean, that's what we do on this show. Why am I now – I'm reading things in these these mock drafts are nuts, but some people have Malik Willis ninth to the Seahawks. Some have him way deep, even still there when the Steelers are – uh, are ready to pick 20th. Have you put your finger on what you think Malik Willis is? I mean, have you decided yet, or is that going to run all the way up until draft day? Yeah, I mean, I think I have a decent idea of what he represents. You know, I really do think he's not a guy we'll see much of in 2022. Um, so it's going to take a team that wants to kind of bring a guy in, sit him for maybe an entire year, which is obviously not the, the more standard approach now. It obviously used to be the way teams did things, but – not what we're used to seeing now, but I think because of in today's NFL, really, it's can you, can you run? Can you move? You know, both directions, and and do you have a rocket arm? Like he's he fits he checks those boxes, and I think you kind of figure out the rest. So I mean, he had a 94 and a half rushing grade for us last year, his final season in college, and he has the strongest arm in this class, I think, by a wide margin. So you check those two boxes off, and like I said, you just kind of bring him in and, and, and mold the clay with every other aspect of it. How do the quarterbacks and where they go, Brad, get affected in the first round by what increasingly feels like – like I remember when we first started talking draft. I mean, way back, like before even the Senior Bowl, we were talking about, well, there could be a run on line, offensive linemen. Uh, we've come around to, well, there could, there could be a run on corners. There could be a run on wide receivers now seems to be the latest hot take on how the first round could shake out. As you look at how teams are moving around, you had the Eagles Saints trade last week, obviously – what position do you see there being a quote-unquote run on, if any, and how does that affect the shakeout of the quarterback position? That's a great question, and I think, honestly, it affects the Steelers a lot because how they sit at 20 and maybe do they make a move you know, for whatever position they maybe want to make a move on um, could you know, depend on how things fall. But for me, I think it's going to be a run on offensive linemen still. I think we're going to see Neil and Aquanu go in the top five pretty easily. And then I think, you know, Charles Cross and Trevor Penning probably in the top 15. Um, and then there's still some solid prospects there. So w if that happens, then maybe you'll see a bunch more of them go. Um, the other one for me, too, is I think we're probably not talking enough about this edge rush class outside of, you know, Hutchinson and Thibodeau, I think, are premier players. I guess Trevon Walker is now getting a ton of buzz. But there's guys like Jermaine Johnson that I think are worthy of top 10 pick. Um, you know, obviously David Ajabo at Michigan got hurt, but there's a lot of depth, a lot of good players. No one's talking about George Karloftis out of Purdue anymore. Um, there could be a run there as well, I think. Do you think Hutchison is worth that, a top two pick? In a standard draft class, maybe not. In this year's class, I think he has the, a very high floor. I think he's going to be a good NFL player. It's like a – I'm not even comping the guys, but I remember the conversation about, like, Ryan Kerrigan coming out of college where – like, no one thought he was going to be, like, one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. But they said, look, the, the odds this guy has five or six years of eight, nine, ten sacks. He went on to have, like, ten years of ten sacks. But just the, the floor, I think, for Hutchinson is so, so, so hot. Fan Morning Show presented by Matt Mertz Plumbing, now part of the Armstrong Comfort Solutions family. Brad Spielberger, Pro Football Focus. 
Uh, I don't think he'll be there when the Steelers pick. But is Derek Stingley Jr. a guy that walks into the NFL and is able to run arm in arm and essentially lock down a premier receiver or give him a really good ball game? Are we seeing that from him? 110%. Uh, yeah, I am a, I'm a huge Derek Stingley believer. Um, you know, I think his 2019 tape when he was a true freshman and even just hearing some of the stories out of practice, battling up against, look, two of the best receivers in the NFL now and Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. I also heard stories, that was back when I was living down there, you heard stories he was trying to convince the coaching staff to play wide receiver, and they were, you know, like basically they, they considered it. I mean, he is a rare, rare athlete, obviously comes from a football background, and I do. I think he's a guy that could step in on day one and be a, a really, really good corner right out of the gate. Another guy I've seen, you know, we talked about Malik Willis falling anywhere from 2 to 20 in all the mock drafts that are coming out these days. Another guy I've seen anywhere from top five in some cases to all the way down there in the 20s is Jordan Davis. What's realistic with where he ends up? Yeah, so he's tough because, I mean, he, he played like 300, 400 snaps, you know, per, per year in college. And so it, it's tough because I think you don't want to fall in love with the testing, but he also had some of the best testing numbers for a guy his size at 340 pounds, you know, to run a faster 40-yard dash than Patrick Mahomes. Like, you can't ignore that either. Um, I do think there's probably a, a, a stop at 15 with the Philadelphia Eagles. Like, I think the Ravens at 14 makes sense. They did re-sign Calais Campbell, who you know brings a presence on the interior, a different type of player. But nevertheless, I think 14 Ravens, 15 Eagles. Like if he flips past there, then I start to wonder. Okay, like does a team maybe consider trading up just to get him because of the the, the upside there? I mean, he is a rare, rare athlete. Do you think Deshaun Watson will end up? Do you think there'll be, I guess, interruptions? Forget a suspension, but in terms of the legal stuff, do you think there'll be interruptions in his career in that stuff that he'll have to take care of either this year or next year, or this will all get blown up somehow? I think it'll this season will end. I, I think that there is a probably a strong chance he goes in the commissioner's exempt list or you know whatever list they put him on. He misses you know four to six games maybe, but. I think after that, this particular legal issue, I don't want to speak to anything else he may do, but this particular legal issue or set of legal issues, uh, I, I mean, I, don't, I just don't see how it can really come, you know, become more. I, it's, it's been a long time. I mean, it's been, what, 18 months now since this first started. So I don't see how new evidence has come to light at this point. Um, you know, I, I do. I think he is done with this particular issue. Brad Spielberger, Pro Football Focus, with us every Tuesday at 8 o'clock here on the Fan Morning Show. Let's bring it back to the Steelers for a moment. Is Minka Fitzpatrick, and I guess maybe the better question is, when does Minka Fitzpatrick get this new deal? And does it, even though he plays a very different safety than Jamal Adams, does he get better than Jamal Adams' money? I think he will. Um, and I think, you know, look, when you trade a first-round pick for a player, you kind of have to expect this is in the realm of possibilities. If they come in, they play good football, they stay healthy, they're going to become among the highest-paid players of their position. And the Seahawks basically paid Adams as little as possible. Yes, they made him the highest-paid pick in the NFL by a decent margin um, at 17 and a half per year. He's still up there kind of in, in, in a league of his own. I think Fitzpatrick deserves to maybe top that by a little bit, push it to, let's say, 18. I do think it gets done this offseason. And frankly, I still think it's not going to be a bad deal because the safety market still is kind of in a lull. We've now seen linebacker has, you know, flown past them with guys like Darius Leonard and Fred Warner. I still think you get that deal done. Maybe Jesse Bates, you know, plays on a franchise tag, then gets a big contract and so on and so forth, go down the list. Um, so yeah, I think it gets done. A, I think it will be the top of the market. B, and I don't, and I think it's going to age pretty well, pretty quickly. C. Last thing for you before we let you go, Brad Spielberger, fill in the blank here. Brad Spielberger will watch how much of the USFL this year? Oh, an embarrassing amount. A truly <laughs> oh embarrassing amount. Tell me why. Um, pro I just, I'm addicted. I just, I just can't quit it. I just can't stop. I watch the XFL. I watch the AAF. I watch it all. If you put on spring football, I will watch it. So is, is there – I don't – and if you haven't done your di deep dives and digs into USFL players yet, it's okay. But is there a player that we should, like, keep an eye out for or anybody yeah. that could actually or, yeah, jump name to the me, league name in the fall? Name me three players then. Yeah, I mean, I, I pay attention to the quarterback. So I'll say this. I'm a Houston Gambler's lifer. I'm a truther. Uh -huh. uh, you know, always been a Houston Gambler's guy. we got a big matchup against the Michigan Panthers, uh, against Jeff Fisher's Michigan Panthers. But anyway – I think Jordan Ta'amu is an interesting quarterback prospect, you know, former college guy at Ole Miss. He's a good player, has made 
he, I think he's had a little bit, a couple NFL snaps. He was in Kansas City for a little bit, but he strikes me as the guy that maybe jumps back to the NFL. But you got to remember, we had PJ Walker, we had Taylor Heineke, like we had all these guys. John Wolford is the Rams now. Like some of these quarterbacks are now backups in the NFL. Do so, you know who Michigan's you know, like, quarterback is, by the way? Yeah, Shea Patterson and I, Paxton Lynch. That's oh, their two D. Wow. Well, wow. Number one overall pick, Shea Patterson, which I didn't think I didn't think was a great pick, but obviously, you know, the hometown kid. Um, <laughs> are you rating yeah, USFL yeah. draft picks now? That's terrible. You I really was, are I, addicted. I, 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 I didn't watch the draft, but I was paying attention on Twitter as the picks were coming in. I thought my gamblers did very well, so shout out, shout out to Houston gamblers. Shout out to the Houston gamblers. All right, that's that's more than we need to know. 